Hey everyone, I reviewed it, I opened it to check the internal. Now, time to convert the Nerf N Series Pinpoint to Half Dart. I'm your host Dave, welcome to that. Well, the N Series Dart, the N1 Dart, basically an Ultra 2.0. Not really my style, I am more of a half dart guy. So let's take this Nerf N Series Pinpoint and convert it to a more standard length and diameter. Now, keep in mind, this mod was made only with hand tool. A hacksaw, flush cutters, a set of file, a cutter knife and some glue. The old school way. This is not, I would say, an easy mod, but a simple mod. There is still a lot of step, a lot of little cutting and shaving, but that was a fun project. Here we go. So why the pinpoint? I say why not? Because uh, this blaster is just a new format, and as I remember, the Ultra Blaster were pretty good, at least the spring-powered one for half dart conversion. So this one is going to be the same, but the internal will need some work because we saw in the internal video there's a big gapping hole into that plunger tube. So let's dig in. I'm going to explain to you what I need to do to this blaster to convert it. Where do I start? Uh, let's start with the easy stuff here, which was the dart gate. Uh, for uh, testing purposes, I'm going to use the 21 centimeter barrel from the Worker Seagull. I put a small o-ring there just for centering purposes into this thing. But this dart gate was pretty easy. I took a tap. It's a 16 millimeter, 16 by 1 millimeter tap. Uh, that thing is used to make my thread into anything, normally it's metal, but for this one it was rather easy. You just center it properly and you end up with uh, enough threads to hold your barrel inside of this thing. And the little o-ring, like I said, it serves to center it. There's no contact, but you will be sure you screwed straight and it serves as a stopper so you don't go too far scrapping and uh, eating up all your threads inside. And we have a good dart gate that holds the barrel in a very, very good spot uh, for chambering the dart. We just gonna need a pusher that is long enough to get there. But seems like we got enough space in this blaster. The bolt sled, a little weak in some point, but I wouldn't touch it. This thing seems nice. The next problem, this pusher and plunger. Pusher it's because it's the same kind of restrictor as in the Ultra 5. It's already removed. It basically I cut the two little notch on each side of the back cap and I just push the restrictor out. Uh, once you send it out the right size you can just push it out, it come out and you have no more restrictor. But inside there is a little round with four pegs, a little looking like that, but with four pegs that uh, block the middle of the hole. You will need to remove it. I still have some filing to do that in the needed work on this part. But once everything is smooth, I shall be able to insert a pusher inside. But this diameter is too big for the magazine, meaning as for the Ultra 5, I'm gonna have to carve it, remove all this material all here to keep like only the dart guide almost, but they remove most of the material on top of it, meaning I am gonna have some trouble with rigidity when it comes to priming. Removing too much material on this thing will cause problem, therefore I'm gonna have to add uh, some kind of a reinforcement at the base and along this line. I'm going to stock probably two pieces of plastic on each side, very, very flush 
here and there so it can add some string to it when I'm priming the blaster. And for the pusher, I am uh, repurposing this uh, Fire Phoenix pusher which I almost remove all the base so I could fit it in and have it because for the dart to chamber it's uh, this little space here that's what will chamber your dart so basically you need the pusher as far as you can forward then this horrid plunger tube I decided to just plug the hole I made a little piece of plastic with a X shot plunger tube which was the exact same diameter whoops this side is crooked because I cut it the same exact diameter and let's say pretty much the same thickness so I have a patch that fit right in the hole it might not be perfect inside but that's gonna reduce the pressure loss to a maximum uh, for now it's not glue it can't really go down I made it so it's very very flush but I taped it from the underside so when I'm gonna glue it I can push it a little up put the glue all around stick it in I already scuffed the plastic inside the round hole and on each side I understand what it means but for reinforcement when the glue is dry I'm gonna put some aluminum tape for reinforcement over it and we shall be good with a good plunger tube I don't plan on changing anything on this this spring was good enough and uh, we got a padded plunger so it's very nice then it's gonna be the mag adapter the mag latch for the Talon should be around the same exact place as this one so maybe I'm gonna reuse it and just put an extension but I am gonna build an independent adapter for it using the existing magazine because within this magazine we got pretty much every part inside of it yeah it's already split it in half you basically cut the glue between all those little posts and you end up with a, a splittable mag there is two screw at the bottom but I'm gonna cut a line a very straight line because there's a weird angle in the magazine that annoy my eye but I'm gonna cut a straight line here finish the trim around it but for the interior for the interior exactly like for the Ultra 5 I'm going to reuse the follower as a guide for my magazine. Because here we have this, ni this nice smooth little track, which can be used for your magazine to go in very smoothly. And we have this follower. And this follower got an angle. So you can pretty much install it on the side somewhere and have good spacing for your magazine it's a little long gonna have to shave it a bit but you pretty much have good spacing or if you don't put this track this thing goes in like a charm I mean uh, that would be a rather easy magazine to do I just need to make sure that this little notch would be at the right height on this one and for that little notch I'm still gonna reuse some part this project is so far zero cost it's all repurposed part or cut down piece of plastic that's it but for that little mag catch I'm gonna use part of this little lock to make myself a mag latch that I'm gonna insert into this part by using either this thing or uh, this little L shaped thing here I'm gonna cut them down and use one to go in there through it and be just long enough for my mag latch I'm gonna use one of the spring that was in the blaster for behind it but that should do it exactly the same thing I did on the ultra 5 so this project is coming together rather nicely I know where I'm going but it's gonna be some tedious work to go on those part it's mainly time so far it's the project we're going in the right way let's fast forward a couple of days when I have more work done on those part and we're gonna come back think I'm pretty much done here uh, all the parts are glued up together the glue is dry on this now all those three parts the fire phoenix pusher the little piece of plastic barrel extension I put 
as a reinforcement are now fully glued as one piece and I even patched up the dead space that there was at the bottom of the pusher. For this tube, uh, like I said, we patched it, glued it, put some aluminum tape, I'm gonna lube it just to make sure because I didn't find a good replacement o-ring that was not too tight inside of this plunger tube therefore I'm gonna use the stuck o-ring but I'm gonna re-lube this tube thoroughly so it's gonna seal properly or better catch uh, and bolt absolutely no work the catch is efficient enough and this bolt sled is pretty robust for what it is I mean this time Nerf didn't cheap out on the part that is about time my dark gate uh, I had to revert back from screwing the barrel directly into it so I redrilled the hole to 16 millimeter and I passed the barrel through therefore it's closer to the dart when chambering otherwise sometimes the dart could go upset and hit this side and I re-chamfered this barrel a little bit so it's a little more progressive for the dart to smoothly go in I did the same thing as I did with the other one therefore I put some o-ring to center it and stuck it there it's not moving it's not going anywhere those two parts are together well and this mag adapter uh, I reused completely every part from the blaster yeah I redid my cut so it's a little nicer uh, for this little latch I use part of a lock for this spacer I use the follower which I send it down a bit this screw is just to hold it permanently centered in the shell when both half is closed it is not moving my little latch is a bit loose inside therefore I am gonna need a better catch spring for this thing but for now it's good enough it's holding and it's clicking in place but sometimes you can make it go a little too much but that's why I kept the little wing here it's like a stopper for the magazine and it's still at the right place one little thing I know I said I would use a stock spring but uh, as flimsy as it is I am not gonna use it I want to put a little more oomph into there since I've patched this hole I'm gonna need to put an upgrade in it I have those two springs this is from a Chinese blaster I think it was the fire Phoenix spring uh, original spring and I got uh, this piece of a uh, 17 millimeter by 1.5 wire spring which is a little bit stiffer than this one and I cut it just a little bit longer and it fit just snug on this little cap so I might just use this one so we have an upgrade on this thing right away why do I decide to upgrade the spring uh, after I said I wouldn't uh, just because I don't just want to make a blaster that is 110 FPS or so which could be pretty okay for any LARP event or anything like that but I want a little more and I'm pretty sure this plunger tube can output more than 100 FPS even with a half dart and a seal breach so let's put everything back together and I'll have a blaster
all assembled without too much trouble. And it doesn't catch. To make a long story short, there was one coil too much in my spring. Now it's priming. The thing is, this prime is so easy, I don't expect very much higher than 120 FPS. And there's not much of a seal in it, meaning my back o-ring. Yeah. It's leaking from the back and maybe a bit uh, from the breech. But, we'll see what it gives. I'm expecting around 120, maybe a bit higher. We're gonna see. Is it at the right place? Yeah, it kind of stopped at the right place. The dart is exactly in line with the barrel. That's good. Does it chamber? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see. Oh, and it flies. Okay. Can I get a chronograph out of this? One twenty point three, one twenty three, one twenty three point three, one twenty four point nine, one twenty one point zero, one twenty two point three. 123.3 123.3 again okay and empty like I said I was expecting about 120 we have a average of 122 but this prime is super light and I already cut myself another spring a gauge slightly bigger than the other one. I made a mistake. I cut a 1.4 to put inside. This is a 1.5. There is a few things I can do to mod it. And there is a slight improvement. I was hoping for more. But that is a good beginning. Now, I just want to see how does it look. With that thing on it. Yeah, uh, not half bad. With that barrel going through, yeah, I really want to have this thing like that with a cool paint job. Yep, I will perfect my seal, I will change the spring to have a little more oomph inside, and this thing will be done, I think. As I said in the beginning, this was a pretty straightforward and simple job. Simply follow your step, take your time, take your measurement. Basically, I don't have any measurement for it. I eyeballed pretty much everything on the project. That's how I work. Now, I'm going to go for the paint job and the cosmetic update on it. Yeah, I think that's it for this small video. In the meantime, you can always follow me on Facebook and Instagram at that old nerve guy. Please leave a like and comment, subscribe for more content. Don't forget to hit that bell to so be notified for my latest video. This was Dave Fatag. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.